Sunday to you all guys joining. Let's just take five minutes more to be at 10 15 a.m. here, which will be 3 15 in Cameroon. So I just want to give you guys some time so that we can build the audience. Let's build the audience before we begin this uh this broadcast. Let me give you guys some good music again. Keep sharing. 
keep sharing where we build the audience, please. We shall be beginning in four minutes, so we just have to share and get more people on board. Just share and get more people on board so that we can start. I'm doing my part of the sharing. I'm doing my part of the sharing. Hit the share button, hit the share button, hit the share button. Share into groups. It's quite professional education that will help one member of the family who can help you or someone or a loved one. This is a very important topic I'm touching today. It's purely professional. I know most people, when you talk about professional things, they don't like to listen. They like to listen to six. But here we are about to talk about what can help some people build their careers, what can help their children become useful and shine as the light of the society. That's what we are talking here. So please, I just uh, hit the share button. Get as many people as possible to watch this show. This should be a show not to miss. Uh, initially, I had to come on the apps page, but uh, for reasons beyond my control, I will be sharing there. I had to go on my page because it didn't give me the link to go on that page. So I decided to share on that page. And we know we have about 6,200 people on the AppScan page. So with the 6.2K, we expect to get some people there to come on board and watch. I know most people will be watching after the show, but I won't keep you people for long. I will begin in under two minutes. Thank you, thank you. I can see all those who are writing here. Merci, Foncha, Mata, Mazi. I see a lot of people watching. Here, yeah, Emma, Otto, Kuchambi. I know you have been waiting for this. You told me yesterday that you are waiting for this. So. I will begin in one minute. Thank you, thank you, Kuchambi. I know you told me yesterday that you will be watching live. Yeah, there are a lot of people watching. Oh, Dr. Success. Dr. Success. Greetings. How is Nigeria today? Etel Theresia, how are you? How is Duala? Merci for your high Switzerland. Uh, Mata Mbongamazi, how is the UK? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning and uh, happy Palm Sunday, how are you guys? How is everyone doing in all the areas of the world? How are you guys today? I hope you guys are okay, family is okay, everything okay. I can see a lot of people joining. Uh, you, 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 let me just bring this to you, that one thing I notice is that many people who join these days, they join in invisibly, invisibly. So when you're doing your Facebook Live or your videos these days, you do it for the, for the YouTube audience. You do it for uh, the people who are going to come after to watch. Not, I mean, not necessarily those who are going to watch instantly when you're talking. So uh, in most of the situations nowadays, when I do Facebook Lives, I do it for those who are going to come and watch it afterwards, especially when I'm addressing topics that are of very, very uh, great importance to the community and for generations to come. Uh, remember, all the videos that we do on Facebook or on YouTube, uh, generations after us are going to come and watch. They're going to come and watch and judge what you were saying, whether at the time it made some sense or you were talking rubbish. So, um, you know, 
we have been into politics uh, for quite some time. You must have noticed I have been off the air so far as politics is concerned. And even though when I come on air, I try to talk about politics, I talk in the, in the area of psychoanalysis, in the area of giving advice and direction, in the area of giving focus. And you must have noticed that um, before we failed, before we failed in what we began, I had said it three years ago that there will be a failure. I remember when I joined uh, Public Space, I joined as the psychoanalyst and the Ngambi man of the revolution. Uh, that was the time that there was a lot of mass killing going down uh, in my homeland in Cameroon. Then I decided to say, no, as a humanitarian professional, I need to put, a, put my voice, inject my voice and my potentials and my skills into this. And when I came in, I came in as a psychoanalyst. I came in as a forecaster. I came in as a pre, one who predict the outcome. And uh, at that time, most of the Cameroonians who were spearheading what was called the revolution decided to invite me on board as uh, a press secretary and as an undersecretary for health and human services. I accepted those positions because um, I could use it to coach, to coach the cabinet, to advise the cabinet, to counsel them on uh, the possibilities of uh, successes as well as the possibilities of failures. Um, but when I discovered that they could not take to my advice and they could not see in the same direction that a psychologist can see. I backed out. I backed out, enumerating to them the consequences of failure. And here we are, four or five years down the road in total calamity and chaos. And uh, there's no headway. Even when there's no headway, I make sure I come back to outline to them strategies of exit exit strategies and uh, uh, the possibilities of exit and the possibilities of uh, minimizing, uh, uh, minimizing the consequences in a situation that can almost look like a win-win because I want you for in every crisis we target the outcome to be a win-win because you know there's no victor and there's no vanquished in a war. In a war there's no victor and there's no vanquished because when people go to the war front both, both sides would lose victims, lose material damages, lose uh, human lives, and lose professions, lose their citizens, and all those type of things. And for what does it profit you to have a nation with no human beings? That's the greatest question. We can see what is happening in Ukraine and Russia today. So um, that is why I came here today to discuss uh, with my audience about uh, the importance of this domain of psychology. You know, uh, we happen to have come from uh, a continent, which is Africa, that had strong beliefs in witchcraft, strong belief in uh, the gods and ancestors, a strong belief in spiritual uh, healing and uh, ancestral worships and uh, uh, prayers on the mountains and uh, uh, sacrificing uh, animals and worshipping animals, worshipping statues and all those type of things, that to depart away from or to go away from such obnoxious beliefs and such a strong tradition uh, uh, becomes a very great impediment to some of us. And uh, such spirit is what most of us have migrated with to the diaspora. We've migrated with those spirits in the diaspora that, uh, uh, to the extent that when people assemble to say what makes sense, they become enemies to the society. Whereas when people assemble to talk in vulgar languages, uh, to emulate negative things, uh, to gossip, or to backbite, or to plan evil, or to recruit others to join in their evil, there you go, the whole population comes out. Take for example, I've seen a number of uh, motivational speakers who have cropped up overnight. Uh, a lot of uh, relationship uh, counselors, uh, some of them just had the inspiration from the streets and from upbringing to be very, very uh, efficient in what they do. Don't get me wrong. Uh, some of these 
uh, professions or some of these fields are callings. They are callings. Some people are called upon to become very excellent experts in things that they have not studied in school. And they do it very well. If you watch in the United States, you watch most of these um, talk show uh, hosts. They are people who have never studied counseling. They have never studied psychology. But they do the job efficiently. So please, uh, I just want to say that uh, I always encourage some of those motivational speakers to take some courses in counseling so that they can learn some of the theories so that they don't do, like for example, it's very important when you are doing such uh, things, even if you have not studied it in school, to understand the ethics, the ethics of the profession. Because, you know, you can be sued for one single mistake that you don't know you are abrogating the law or you are violating the ethics of the practice. And besides, everyone who practices such should be able to obtain a license where you live. And to obtain that license, you have to show credits that you have validated in school. So I always tell them that, I always encourage them that they should take some courses in counseling, take some courses in psychology. It's a broad field. And that brings us to the reason why I'm here today. The reason why I'm here today is because I've received a lot of phone calls. I've spoken with a lot of friends. I belong to groups. I belong to large, larger networks of psychologists. I belong to networks of governments in psychology and social work. And... Um, as you, all, as you all know, I work for the state of West Virginia and, and the Department of Health and uh, uh, Human Resources, which is DHHR, and I work in the Child Protective Service Division, which is responsible for evaluating homes and families on the, how they meet with uh, uh, the, standard, the standard practice of uh, good uh, cohabitation, uh, if the children are well fed, if there is domestic violence at homes, if there is child abuse and all those. That's what I do at the level of government. At the level of practice, private practice, I own my private consultancy, which is uh, the Association of Psychological and uh, Psychiatric Services, APPS, in West Virginia, which is also a non-governmental organization registered in Cameroon, which I'm able, through cyber networking, work with, 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 with Santo Jamo to carry out uh, treatment planning for some patients, as well as do referrals, as well as come up with uh, medication management, mental health evaluation, psychological assessments, and all those. And I also do that for the courts in the United States. I also do that for immigrants. And I do a lot of work in other areas. So, but now I want to use this intelligence to coach those our young children, those our students who are in universities in Cameroon, those our parents, and those our chiefs and leaders in Cameroon, and especially in African countries as well as, uh, as, well as the entire globe, to understand what psychology is all about. Psychology is not only a study. It is not a subject. It is not a subject. We are gone past those days of subjects, of studying subjects. You study history, you study literature, you study economics, you study commerce, you study things that do not take you to where you can put food on your table. I'm not saying the study of those things are wrong. No. But those things were never developed to become professions. Those things only guide you to become, to end up as a teacher in a classroom, which is not what has to be. Because when we go to university or when we pursue higher education after high school, our, our, our primary objective as well as that of the parents is to see that we become successful. Is to see that after we obtain at least a bachelor's degree, we should be able to transform it to putting food on the table. You cannot go and acquire all these academics Go and acquire all these degrees, and at the end of the day, you come and choose farming. Whereas you didn't study agriculture. You come and study rest restaurant management, or you help to become a cook in a restaurant, whereas there was hospitality and hotel management right there that you, have, you would have taken as a program. So, but right now, we are becoming evolved that we try to encourage our children to know why they are getting into a field. And one of the biggest or the largest industry that exists in the developed world is this aspect of human behavior, social network, 
understanding human beings, understanding the society, understanding in work workplace uh, uh, um, uh, environment and other influences that affect human being and influence human behavior, understanding how the institution of family works, understand how law courts operate, understand how the military functions, and it functions on very strong psychological principles and standards. So, psychology, as you see it, is not only a study. It, when it comes at the level of study, you refer to psychology as a study of human behavior, understanding the biological influences, life across age bands, social influences, environmental, occupational, like getting a job and all those things. But when you want to go into it, you try to look at it from the angle of it, providing a, life, a lifetime job or a lifetime occupation for you. And it is very, very broad. It is broad. Okay, let me just go into uh, the foundation of it. For example, people have been asking me the question, like example, children who want to go into this field, that what does it take, Dr. Nick, for one to study psychology? I used to tell them, the first thing you have to know before you get into studying psychology is understanding of how you can write very well how you can articulate very well, understanding history, a little bit of history, because uh, telling a story. Um, for example, you can be able to recount or paraphrase or repeat what somebody says to you without making mistakes, uh, which will represent what exactly that person is communicating. So in other words, we say communication is key. So those who studied a bit of journalism, those who studied English language, those who studied history, those who studied biology, because biology in biology is useful because you're going to come to study the life across life development across the spans, the various spans from natal, from prenatal to natal, then to uh, teenagehood, adulthood, and uh, later life. Uh, the older population, the geriatric population. So you've got to know a little bit about life, life across the span. So some sort of biology is very important. Uh, but we, we talk of basic biology, the biology you studied in secondary school. Yeah, even if you don't know about biology, food and nutrition was a beginning step to biology. So food and nutrition, hygiene and sanitation, and all those things. You just need to have a view, a view of what a human organism looks like and how it functions, human development. So if you understand some of these principal concepts of the human being, biological aspects of the human being, you have strong skills of communication, you have good skills in writing, you have good skills of articulating uh, verbally, uh, verbal and non-verbally, you have also good skill of critical thinking. That's the most essential when it comes to, to, to becoming a good psychologist. You have to have a good skills of, uh, have to have some good skills of critical thinking. What is critical thinking? In the Bible, we say it's King Solomon's judgment, right? When uh, two women were fighting over a child and they brought the child, King Solomon said, okay, we will divide the child in two halves and give each and every one of you a half of the child. One lady stood and said, the other lady stood and said, no, don't divide the child. I prefer the other lady to go with the child. Then King Solomon said, no. The person who has said that the child should not be divided or killed is the owner of the child because she has that feelings of the child. And then that comes to nature or nurture. She had no, no normal human being who has nurtured a child, carried a child for nine months, delivered that child, and will want that child to be killed. The other person who has no feelings for that child was not, they prove out that that was not the mother of the child. So the person who said, don't kill the child, was the mother of the child. And King Solomon then could judge that that child belonged to that lady who said that child should not be killed. So that is wisdom and that is critical thinking. Critical thinking is wisdom. As we're growing up in the society, we have some people who have never seen the four walls of school. But those people can resolve issues that a PhD holder can never resolve. That we talk of common sense. Common sense which is not common. That's why, in other words, we turn to say psychology is a development of the sixth sense. 
the sixth sense. We have five senses, right? Do you remember the five senses? Touch, smell, hear, taste, and others, right? Then we have now what? The sixth sense. The sixth sense now is where you go into this study so that you can be given the sixth sense. And that sixth sense comes from great principles or great theories that have been formulated by great guys in this field of psychology. You remember Sigmund Freud, right? The study of the conscious and the subconscious, or the study of the conscious and unconscious. So when you come to that, when you come to that field where you are able to understand the conscious and the unconscious activities of the human being, then you are speaking psychological language. It means that you are able to we weigh water. Water is something we can weigh. We can measure water. We can measure Maggie Cube. We can measure uh, Gary. We can measure rice. We can measure beans. But when it comes to a level that you are now in a study where you are trying to measure the air that a human breathes, the air that a human breathes, you are able to measure the intelligence of a human. We call it the intelligent quotient. Yeah, you are measuring IQ. IQ. You are trying to assess and measure human being who has a greater potential and IQ as opposed to the one that has a lesser potential and IQ. You are measuring the existence of aging in a human being. A three years old child or a five years old child may have the brain of a 75 years old human being. How did you come to know that? Because you measured the brain of that child. You discovered that that child would definitely become a great somebody because he's having the brain, although young is having the brain of an older person. So when you come to measuring intelligence, you come to measure personality. For example, we are all human beings, but we do not carry the same personality. We have different aspects in us. You measure emotions. You measure feelings. You know, these are some of the things that psychologists measure. And we call that assessments. Assessments. And uh, assessments exist at different levels. There are assessments that we call them level A, level B, and level C assessments or testings in psychological assessments. And this, we use various assessment test batteries. The test to be able to perform those assessments, you must have been trained to administer each level of it. For example, we can measure anxiety by using the back anxiety inventory. We can measure uh, uh, depression by using the back depression inventory. We can measure intelligence by using the uh, Wechsler adult uh, scale of intelligence, which you have the Wechsler adult scale and you have the Wechsler preschool. The preschool is used for children where the adult scales are used for uh, um, 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 uh, adults. Then you have, you can, you can measure someone who is lying as opposed to someone who is not lying. You see the polyglot test. The polyglot test that they carry out to assess those lie detector tests is coming from one of the scales of the, uh, of the assessment batteries that psychologists use, which is coming from the MMPI the Minnesota Multifacet Personality Inventory, the MMPI. So in that, in those, among those scales, you can measure a human being who tells lies. We call it the malingering scale. Human beings who malinger or who want to achieve factitious results. For example, the fake. We say factitious, the fake. So when you come to level C testing, which is the doctorate level of testing, you can't perform it without being licensed as a doctor professional. You can measure intelligence quotient with an adult scale because that leads to lifetime disability. Because your results, your writing, already keeps that human being in lifetime disability and qualifies that human being for benefits. I can't, you, can't, you cannot use, uh, you cannot measure dementia and qualify certain people with certain skills. For example, if I'm using the Loria Nebraska Neuropsychological Test Battery, if I'm using that to qualify somebody suffering from dementia, then it means I've already given that person dementia at that age. For example, at 55 years, I can give you dementia. At 45, I can even give you dementia. There are people who suffer early childhood dementia or early, early aging, early aging, or early uh, lifespan dementia. Some people who suffer dementia right at the age of 75 to 80 to 100 to 102, but some people, in some people, it can begin as early as 50 years. 
So, how do you qualify? Because to qualify now, you need to go through a clinical psychologist or a psychiatrist who can be able to use these skills. Master's degree level psychologists don't use level C testing. They use level A and B. They can be able to assess you depression, other things, feelings, emotions, anxiety. But when it comes to those hardcore issues, hardcore assessment batteries that can lead to lifetime impairment, which is recognized by the government and qualified that individual for benefits, exclude you from immigration interviews, exclude you from passing interviews for citizenship. That's why they ask you, if you feel you cannot answer questions concerning citizenship, meet a psychologist, meet a psychiatrist, a psychiatrist, meet your medical doctor. Those are the only people qualified to exempt you from immigration interview. If I give you a diagnosis of intellectual disability, if I give you a diagnosis of dementia, if I give you a diagnosis of that, having assessed with all those scales, you will be excluded for those interviews. Those are things we don't use them so often because first, there is also, the government also has the psychologist who can also contradict you. They can also call that individual for assessment and evaluation to contradict your private assessment because I'm a private practitioner, though I work with the government at the level of social services, but I'm a private clinical psychologist. I have a private practice. So now, when it comes to understanding psychology, I'm getting more into what we do without telling you people the various branches. The first thing I began with is to make you people know that that is a study as well as a profession. It is not only a subject. It is a profession, and the profession is vast. It's a very huge profession. You have clinical and counseling psychologists. The clinical psychologist... The clinical psychologist is, um, is an alternative to a psychiatrist. The only difference between a clinical psychologist and a psychiatrist is that the psychiatrist is a medic, is an MD. It's a medical doctor. He, he did the general part of becoming a medical doctor, then switch into psychiatry. And when he switches to psychiatry, it means he can effectively carry out surgery. That's why we talk of neuro, neurosurgeons and neuro, neuropsychologists, neurosurgeons. Neurosurgeons are specialized in brain issues and they can they, to perform the surgery. Um, neuropsychologists are the people who can actually assess the problems and put to the neurosurgeon to carry out the surgery. Because uh, let me tell you, to be a clinical psychologist in areas in the United States, it's authorized under the Amer APA, American Psychological and Psychiatric Associations. It's, uh, it's stipulated that in areas that there are no psychiatrists, clinical psychologists will prescribe medications. And the clinical psychologists are people who have studied psychopathology, psychopharmacology. They are not, for example, let me, let me, let me make this very clear because you guys are getting to understand this field. Um, Clinical psychologists are of two types. You have those who have PhD, and you have those who have Psych D. Psych D like MD and FAMD. I'm Psych D. Psych D means you've taken the clinical track to work in hospital settings, which means you're an alternative to the psychiatrist. The psychiatrist is the first in command in the clinical setting. The clinical psychologist is the second in command. But they are all doctors. And the clinical psychologist monitors the effect of the medications that the psychiatrist prescribes on the patient and develop therapies that will suit the patient's fastest means of recovery. Which means the clinical psychologist carries out the assessments, evaluate the effects of the medication on the patient, talk to him on a daily basis, understand his feelings, emotions, and how he's getting well. That's why he spends about an hour or two hours or do 12 sessions or to 14 sessions to even 50 or 100 sessions with that patient. That is the psychologist's job. The psychiatrist comes in to prescribe the medications and also to detect if that patient is suffering something that 
entails or warrants a surgery or anything that has to do with the organs having a malfunction. That is what the psychiatrist does. Whereas the clinical psychologist does the assessments, uses the psychological test batteries, perform therapy, meet with that individual, maybe on day-to-day, week-to-week updates, trying to know how the person slept, how the person is eating, is showered, and do all those life goals are being met, look for areas of dysfunctionality, look for areas where the individual is troubled in the mind, in feelings, in attachments, in relationships, in school attendance, occupation, problems with the law. All those things are the components of a comprehensive psychological evaluation. That's why we ask a lot of questions. We ask questions. Too many questions. We we'll ask all the questions in the world. So that is the psychologist's job. And the psychologist in a clinical setting is the second in command. In the medic mental health psychiatric hospital setting, the psychologist is a doctor, but is the second in command after the psychiatrist, although they are doctors. And then also, I also tell those children who want to study, I don't want to pick a career, that one of the aspects I guide my children to pick a career about is whether you are satisfied with what you are doing. You have to look for the level of being comfortable with what you want to do or what you plan to do. Not that you must follow what your father studied. Choose your career. Tell me. I will tell you. I will guide you towards achieving the results. But there's one thing I also tell them. That I choose, I make my career choices depending on a list I pull on Google to look at the top ranking and highest paying jobs in the U.S. or in the world. Yeah, my, my son was coming home every day and telling me, Daddy, I want to be an engineer. Daddy, I want to be this. I said, Junior, you know, I'm going to give you the list of the top paying professions in the U.S., about 10 of them, and you're going to figure out what you want to choose in that list and do. But I believe that my father gave me a principle which I try to follow. My father was a police officer, was a policeman. He died at the age of 72, and he was a, a, a principal, principal the police. And he had just class 7, standard 6. But he sponsored almost all of us to the level that we were able to attain a bachelor's degree. Which means, and he kept on telling us one thing that I will not forget, that if I train my children and they don't become more than me, or they don't have more qualification or excel more than what I did, then I have failed. In this house, I plan, I plan, it's my long-term desire that I should have doctors in this house. I should have nurses, I should have pastors, I should have uh, police officers as well, commissioners. <laughs> Even I wanted to put me into commissioner of police, I refused. Because I was so interested in studying his notes when he comes back from the police station. That's why I picked up some of my critical thinking on how he could deliberate on the issues, on the cases. And this is what we study in psychology today. We talk of deliberation on case issues, case studies, case conceptualization, deliberation, and meta-ethical deliberation. Which means you deliberate on an issue, you look for results, you go get a cup of coffee, you take a cigarette for those who smoke, you drink a cup of tea, you chat discuss with friends about it without mentioning names. Listen from their opinions, informed opinions. And come, up, come back, talk to your supervisors about it. Then you come now to do a meta-ethical deliberation that is final. In treatment plan, does it. When somebody presents himself to you as sick, you note down all the important aspects the person is narrating. After you do consultation, you tell the patient, you hang in there in the lobby, I'm going to deliberate on your issue. And I'm going to give you the results. I'm going to do in, bring out my interventions. What, what are you going to be using in the interventions? What are you going to be using in the, in the interventions? You're going to be using supervisory expert opinion. If you are the psychologist, you are the boss. So you don't have a supervisor. For example, I don't have a supervisor. So what am I going to do? I'll consult with colleagues. Colleagues can, they can be junior colleagues who can give you ideas that are more efficient and better than even a supervisor. They can be some colleagues who are so intelligent that uh, they, they even work more than doctors. They can give you some ideas. For example, I've worked in settings whereby, as a doctor, my supervisor was a master's degree holder. 
He never knew how to call me, whether to call me Doc or to call me Nicholas. <laughs> and uh, that, those kind of situations are situations that you accept it. As you guys all know, we come from different countries of origin. We have built our careers in this country. We still have a strong accent. We know that. We still have our color, which we know that plays in terms of psychology in some workplaces. What happens? They know you are the boss, but you wouldn't be the boss and you have to put food on your table, what do you do? You have to be hanging there, bear your title, do your private practice with your title, and walk and bring food on your table, pay your bills and be happy. That's it. So I want to tell people that this field has a lot of branches. There's clinical psychology that has to do with the hospitals and medical settings. In that clinical psychology aspect, I told you there are two PhD, there are two differences in doctors of psychology. You have the scholar practitioner model, you have the scholarly model and the practitioner model. 1939 Boulder Conference that stipulated a separation between clinicians and psychologists. The Psych D was implemented now as a branch to work in the clinics and the PhD scholarly model assigned to university professors and lecturers. So there's a Psych D and there's a PhD. So you choose whether you want to become a scholar or you want to become a practitioner. A practitioner is somebody who does things with their hands. Medical doctors, nurses, does things with their hands. Psych D, which is us, the clinical psychologists, we don't do, do things with their hands because we talk to the patients, we write, we do things, we touch them, we feel them, we do therapy with them. So we do things with their hands. Those who are scholars, they do research and they write books, they carry out... Um, they become professors and scholars in universities for psychology. It doesn't mean the clinician cannot also go and teach. You're just teaching us something you want to do, want to be, but not that. You were specialized in that. Those who have PhD are specialists in that. A PhD holder in psychology can as well uh, take exams for clinicians, have the license to practice, but that will warrant him to take courses in psychopathology and psychopharmacology. Because we, the clinicians, we take courses in psychopharmacology. We take courses in medication management. We take courses in drug prescriptions. For example, the depression for depression, you have to know all the selective, selectivity, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, the SSRIs. For schizophrenia and psychosis, you're going to know all psychotic medications. For all other aspects, anxiety, and other things, you need to know all those medications, what they do, their side effects, so that if the patient comes to you, saying, my psychiatrist gave me this medication, you ask him how he's feeling. You watch out for the side effects, if it's not that, which is worsening the therapy, which is worsening the therapy. And you may tell the psychiatrist immediately that, revoke this medication for this patient. For the 12 sessions, the first six sessions we were together in therapy, this, this patient was improving. For the last seven or eight sessions that we have had, or number nine session, we find him retrogressing, which means that medication is having an effect on his behavior. And I will not want these medications to continue. We can change it to something else. You work like, we call it team, joint treatment team. Joint treatment team in a clinical setting. In the mental health setting, we have a joint treatment team. The primary care physician, the psychiatrist, the psychologist, the social worker, the nurse practitioner, the registered nurse, the LPNs. These are all members of the joint treatment team. We do joint treatment team. I do my job, you do your job. I do my job, you do your job, and at the end of the day, we have one discharge sheet. You are discharged because this and this, these areas have been visited. We find this and this result in this and this area. At the end of the day, they don't tell you whether you were having only a psychological report, you have only the comprehensive discharge note that have all your documents. You want a copy of your psychological report, it's inside. You have a copy of your medication, it's inside. You have a copy of all therapies you have taken. You have a copy of all tests that have been, what the radiologist did and everything. You have your file. Joint treatment. That is the kind of thing we would like to have in hospitals in Africa. Where you go into a hospital and you are evaluated in all areas. Now, this is what the dogma, the dogma, in our profession.
multidisciplinary team. Yeah, MDT. Thank you. That's the same. Yeah. So this is the dogma we have grown with or the myth or what hinders our progress in Cameroon and other African countries. We have been so embedded in some certain misthinking or wearing a negative image about people who study the brain saying that all of us look man mental like our patients so all of us do not you know this field is not no he will become a mad he's a mad person's doctor uh, he will, he's also mental he's uh, it's not our fault that we study a lot of abstracts we study the conscious with the conscious and the unconscious aspects of human beings and that makes us become um um, um, we have different lenses that we look at things. Uh, the, the development of the sixth sense, the sixth sense and the third eye. The third eye is now the clinician eye that is planted in you. That you will see things different. Everywhere you are, you will see things different. When you talk to people, you, you feel different. You, 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 turn to, you turn to be in them. And you turn to feel their pain at times. And you turn to because without that, you cannot be able to get into a human being, understand that human situation, understand the pains the person is feeling, and to be able to formulate a treatment plan. How do you formulate a treatment plan in a field that we don't deal with test tubes? A field that we don't take, a, we don't take your blood to sample to see if you are mad. There's no laboratory to take your blood and, 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 and go and examine if you have mental illness or not. No. It takes just my eye contact with you, talking with you, listening to you, getting your verbal and non-verbal cues for me to do my diagnosis. It takes time. It ta for example, I cannot land on a perfect diagnosis insofar as I have not also ruled out on family members, what family members say about your growth, your development, how you were born. Was it normal born, birth? Was it C-section? Did you have a fall in early childhood? Because some children, suffer, some people suffer latent brain incursions or development because of uh, a fall in early childhood that may have affected the brain and nobody knew. Uh, did they have some other physical illnesses that they have been living with that affected? Did the parents have some illnesses, the history of the parents? with depression and other issues. Does mental illness uh, exist in that family? Because we, there is the theory of uh, uh, genetic predispositions. Genetic predispositions means that uh, it runs in the family line. So um, mental illness really runs in some family lines. And uh, you have to rule out all these things to come out with a, a judgment to see if uh, this is an issue that can be treated within a short time or is a lifelong illness. So, as I was saying, I will not rule all over because I can take you people talking about this field from morning till next morning. But let us be specific on the students who have already outlined to you what psychology is, the study and the profession. Uh, let me go into the different areas of the profession because I earlier outlined also that um, uh, some students want some, to know about some subjects that they can start studying if they want to become a psychologist. Then I want also to highlight that the different areas of psychology that they may choose in career. It's not only clinical and counseling. Counseling has to do with therapy, has to do with career counseling, has to do with uh, um, educational. Educational psychology is a very big one. You see teachers, people who go to teach, or people who function within school and learning areas. Not all the pupils or students that are admitted in school have the same IQ. Some of the children are born with defects that are not visible, visible with the eyes, that parents don't even identify these defects. That's why they have, it's a barrier to learning. It's a barrier to them scoring A's. It's a barrier to them being number one to 10. Some person, the way they only jet class, Jet class, jet class. When I don't know, say that picking no need for the, for that track. He's not supposed to be in that track. There's a class that have identified different tracks for different children. After having known their intelligent quotient, their IQ, their IQ score. For example, I got four kids. 
I got one with a low IQ score. I got two with very heavy IQ score. I got one who struggles in the middle. I want to take talk for my own example. And what happens? The one with the lower IQ score is in the lowest track that they call it special needs education, which means he needs support. It doesn't mean that child is deficient. It doesn't mean that child will not be successful in life. It means the child's brain is formed in a way that it's not developed to meet the activity, your, the activity of some. He has, he has, where he has his strength is different from where we have forced him to be. Let's identify children's strengths and where they want to be, where they were formulated, where they were built, their God-given potentials of where they should belong. We have to formulate their strength in that direction than forcing them to undergo a path that is not theirs. That is what educational psychologists do. So they carry out assessments. They carry out intelligent quotient assessments. They carry out um, uh, personality assessment for just children. They carry out the Wyatt, Wyatt, which is the achievement test to look at the very achievement areas where the children have strength and not. For example, my son with a low intelligent quotient is the best runner. My son with a with a, with a low intelligent quotient is the best musician, can play all instruments. My son Son with a low intelligent question is very excellent at computers. There you go. You can see people like wrestlers. You can see the best runners like Michael Fish. Those are special needs. They will bring you the trophy. They will bring you the trophy in their own areas. They must not be medical doctors. They must not be engineers. They will bring you a trophy in their areas. So the problem we have is that our educational structures were formulated not to identify these children to make them to become useful. We instead say, oh, they are rejected. That math picking. That mental picking. That this and that. So our job is to go back and revisit our educational system. Where do we put these children? And there are special instructors, educationalists, school counselors, educational psychologists who are trained only to handle that population and they are paid very lucrative salaries more than the ordinary teacher or instructor. They are at the master's level and they are at the doctorate level. So you can, if you want to be an educational psychologist or an educational instructor who works up only with those areas, what about the other instructors who are women who work only with girls? To empower girls to identify their areas, uh, gender issues, and work with girls in colleges and schools to equate the balance and deal with issues, to, to uplift them, to make them not to feel inferior in the society. Those areas are handled also by educational psychologists who focus on gender, who focus on other issues. So, and then to the disability issue in school. I've told you the people who handle those. So some of you may be looking at focusing on educational psychology with that lenses of becoming an instructor for special needs, an evaluator for special needs, a school counselor, a school psychologist, or something. And then when it comes to industrial psychologists, this is a very one, very big one because most of these guys they hit the highest amount of money in terms of job. These are the guys on three hundred thousand dollars, four hundred thousand dollars jobs. These are the CEOs of companies. These are the guys who come in usually at the basic level of entry in a company, and their jobs is usually on contract. They come to a company to resurrect a company that is falling, or an institution that is falling, industrial organizational institutions. They go inside. For example, they are called by the CEO or the board of directors to come and tell them why the sales of that company has fallen within the past five years, as whereas uh, 10 years before they were at a boom. Why is there a loss? For, I'll give you an example. One psychologist was called in a company to come and see what can be the problem, look into what can be the problem that this company is no longer producing good results. When I talk of good results, I mean the output it is no longer it's, it's not producing at the potential that it was producing and not making money. It's working at a loss. He went down, the psychologist took his pen and paper and went down to the factory 
to have a one-on-one -on -one with all the workers. He went to worker number A, just came from a divorce, have family problems, have not eaten for three days, doesn't know where the wife and children are. Worker number two, drunk, drinks often every night and comes home, rests only for two hours before he could show up for work. Worker number three, suffering from health problems, has liver problems and chronic back pain, is on medication. Number, no, worker number five, hardly sleeps. He concluded, he wrapped up his document and went back to the board of directors and told them that I have discovered the problem of the company. What is the problem of the company? The com problems of the company ranges from incompetency of the workers, poor pay, family problems, marital problems, sickness, and all those. That's why the output of the company is low. Drunkenness of workers. How can, they put, how can workers come to work who have just slept only for two hours? How do, you, and how, do you, how do you think that and with drunkenness? How do you, and then how can others be suffering from uh, uh, physical ill ailments and, and, and on medications? How can, they, how can the output of those workers be great? That's why the whole structure has to suffer. The industry has to suffer. Poor pay. Incentives must be raised. Workers must be given life, life, life and health insurance, basic insurance. A transportation for workers to job. Jokers, workers must have en enough time to sleep and rest, to think. Workers must go through therapy to adjust their family life and situations before they come back for work. Who cares in Africa? Who cares? That's why we have everything going zigzag, because we don't have these professionals in place. We need psychologists who are trained for industrial organizational who has to deal only with businesses. These are the guys with the big box. They always rise to the level of CEOs and they're always the top ranking, the top ranking paid. They even, they may, they may be happy or for, they may be fortunate to pick jobs of 500K a month or a million, 1.5 a month. I want not to talk about, don't you know coaches? Coaches, soccer coaches. Some of them are, are, are psychologists, sports psychologists. Sports psychologists, those are coaches who hit jobs for 15, 15 million contracts. Um, they sign contracts for 1.2 million or 1.2 billion. Uh, those are coaches also, those are psychologists. Sports psychology is on a, another branch of psychology. Then you also have forensic, forensic. Forensic has to do with the, with the sector that has to do with uh, crimes and investigations. Um, um, every psychologist does some sort of forensic work at some times because um, there are some patients that I see who are referred by court for drug treatment, who are referred to court for mandated um, uh, family counseling therapy. There are those that in their confidentiality statement, you have to always indicate that you have a right to share, to break, to break or to breach confidentiality only when a judge will subpoena you to do. In America, all doctors have that clause. We have a right to break confidentiality or to breach confidentiality when we receive a request from the court only. I cannot breach confidentiality to your brother, your cousin, your neighbor, but I can breach it because of the court. So I inform you in the informed consent under the confidentiality rules of privacy. HIPAA. If you have studied HIPAA, those are some of the things we do. And when it comes to forensic, you have to also know about how to prepare reports for the court. The way you prepare medical reports and the way you prepare court documents is different. For example, those who want to expedite their, their immigration and other documents that are pending with the immigration will always contact us to get um, a proof of hardship. A proof of hardship document or you expedite on basis of humanitarian grounds due to an illness, and you can also get from a psychologist a document or from a medical doctor a document, an MD. This is, you are expediting based on hardship, which means as a result of the delays, you are undergoing depression and anxieties. You are unable to meet up your financial, your financial and occupational demands. You are unable to go to school and your case will be expedited. 
you can only have these documents to prove. If you are working with your lawyers, they must have told you you need to see a psychologist or a, a medical doctor to give you a proof of hardship or a proof of extenuating, extenuating circumstances. Yeah. You can only do that on basis of humanitarian grounds, or on basis of being a family of a military personnel, or on basis of country condition. Country condition, for example, the wars in Cameroon, new, new, new developments to prove that your family is on harm's way, your loved one or siblings, or the people that were supposed to join you as family members are direct victims of the human slaughter on the ground. Guys, you guys should pick something from this and use. You know, I can never tell you so and so, but I will lecture you and then you use your senses. Some of you are stuck with situations that you don't know how to go around when your medication is next door to you. <laughs> Some of you will prefer to instead say, oh, <laughs> Dr. Nick is a madman, he's lying, he's this. Those who have tried, have tried. And those who have not tried, have not tried. So, we keep trying. Life is trying, okay? If you come to I was telling in my videos, one of my outings I was educating people on, when you come to America, or when you go to Europe, or when you go anywhere, two-thirds of your life or three-quarter of your success in life in where you are depends on the people who pick you from the airport the first day. If somebody is cleaning excrements from a group home and picks you up who is a bachelor's degree holder, you must clean that shit with ye. If you never clean that shit with ye, Tire. Then go find out for yourself your potentials. No, so you go continue clean that shit with you say you be you be confused till you go back for Africa. When you want to come abroad, investigate, find out, look at what you have studied. There are some people that when I landed here in the United States, I started working in a restaurant as an assistant cook. I started driving airport taxi. I started working driving the tractor trailer. Some people said I don't have a bachelor's degree. Some people say, Dr. Nick, they lie. He goes school for Usai. He goes school for Usai. He get bachelor's degree for Usai. Hey, they say, don't be the doctor. Which kind of doctor? Even for Europe. Some people, they call me say, you get an online doctor. I say, come get your own. Come try your own. If not online. So that school, school don't will move. School don't will kill you there. <laughs> school will kill you there. If you do seven years away, I should overnight all nights and seven years only for read book. Then for America again. After the one I don't read for Boya University. So I don't know even know I've been a student leader for first batch for Boya University. So I don't know even know say out of eight hundred students, I will be among the first thirty nine where they where they select them for graduate for University of Boya with honors. With honors. Out of eight hundred, only thirty nine was the first official list of graduation. And only is that 39, only 16 or 17 had honors. The others have had ordinary degree. I had honors. First batch, University of Boya, 19, were transferred from Waikile to Yubi. And I was a student leader. Then they don't even know that I worked in the ship industry. I left Cameroon by ship. I was a cadet marine officer. After having studied ship management in Limbe, Limbe port, then I became assistant shipping manager at 22 years in Douala Seaport. Then I joined a ship to travel to Europe as a marine cadet officer. Went to Panama, China, Hong Kong. I came to Germany as a marine cadet officer on visit. I didn't come as, I came as an, an international worker coming to visit. I'd already been to China, to Hong Kong, to Panama. That was in 1999 I was in Germany to visit. I was in France, I was in Belgium, I was in Holland. And because people saw me, came to Europe, did some few black jobs, gathered some money and shipped some containers and shipped vehicles, they said, oh, that money on school don't end. In America, I went back to school, I did my master's. I went to community college in Baltimore, where I did English as a second language. It will puzzle you that somebody can take English as a second language in school. Yes, because the Cameroon English is not the... English that you will use in graduate studies. The British accent English and the British way of writing is not the American way of writing. They have where to put their commas. They have where to put their full stops. They, don't, they have where some sentences they call run-on sentences that if you use it here to write at exams, they fail you. They fail you. So what happened? I had to go to community college to take ESOL, English as a second language, First course, second course, before I applied to Capella University in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where I did my master's degree for 18 months. 18 months, no sleep. 18 months. That 
master's degree program. I had to travel the whole U.S. to have uh, what they call residences. Had to fly on the airplane all the time to go meet your instructors for residences. They have, we have live sessions going on on Zoom. You have to study all this and submit papers every two weeks. You have, I had the master's and I had my scholarship to go to the Chicago School of Professional Psychology to do my doctorate in California where I was there for four years. So now only for you to graduate and start figuring your way out and how you can transform all this knowledge into money, then somebody gets up and tells you that your online degree. Nonsense. The important thing is not the degree or where it comes from. That's the bottom line in America. It is whether you are able to pass a board. Because the person who lives Harvard, who lives Princeton, does the same board with you who studied in community college in Baltimore. The same board that the person from Harvard or Cambridge will take to be qualified as a psychologist is the same board Dr. Nick will take coming from Capella University. So if you pass the board, you are licensed. If you don't have that board, you cannot be able to sign one document in the United States for anybody and it's realized because the first thing you do when you are doing any evaluation, they ask you your board number. They ask you psychologist number what? Social worker number what? Nurse practitioner number what? This uh, licensed clinical social worker number what? You have to put that number there when you finish. They will Google it and find you a licensure. If you are licensed before you can practice. If you are not licensed, you practice, you go to prison. So, anybody who come and tell you all those jargons, tell them that anybody who study online, study in classroom, takes the same board. Anybody who lives Harvard, live everywhere, takes the same board. The same board exams. So, okay, coming now, we have talked about clinical psychology, counseling psychology, industrial psychology. We have looked at forensic. Forensic has to do with crimes. Forensic has to do with working with uh, cor the correction system. For example, in the prisons, those people who are in jail, they need constant evaluation. They need constant evaluation of their mental status, how they have been, they need treatment. Some are not only suffering from physical ailments, they have also psychological ailments. Almost everybody has psychological ailment because you are not where you want to be. Jail is not a good thing. They don't choose to be there, but it happens. Sometimes some people go there by mistake, which means they can be victims of circumstances in any jails. You know that. Some of them, for example, it, we are, we're in a society whereby women have been lying, men have been lying about domestic violence. Some fabricate it. And some, in, a lot of black American men and women are suffering in detention, whereas they were all lies. They were all framed up into stories that don't exist. There are stories of child abuse and molestation which are framed up. So you need to get into working with some of those cases to discover a lot of people suffering when they are not supposed to suffer. Some are behind bars who are not supposed to be behind bars. There are mistakes or they are set up. There are some people who, who, with whom drugs were found who were not aware of how the drugs got there because people put the drugs there to incriminate them. It happens. So if you are in detention for that kind of issue, you should be having a mental breakdown. And so you need someone who will talk to you Try to minimize the damages from day-to-day -day basis. You need some, some SSRIs, selective serotonin, rehoptic inhibitors, to calm down your depression all the time, your anxieties. Then your mental health psychology has to do typically with clinical psychology as well. Because you know mental health practitioners, master's degree holders also do mental health counseling and other things, pastoral counseling, pastoral counseling that has to do with the churches. Some people train only to become pastors and they have to take courses in psychology and counseling to perfect their pastoral work. Military, in the military also, military psychologists, some people go into psychology just to work with the military, to, 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 to peel up and boost up their morals in times of war, to be on constant watch and evaluation of the potentials of the military, to carry out admission tests for the military admit on test to see the competency, to judge on the competency, whether you'll be an efficient and efficacious military expert or you will not just be qualified. Um, then, we come now to family. That's a big one. Family psychologist. You know, there's what we call marriage family therapist. Marriage family therapist. These are people who are trained only to work with family issues. And these are licensed uh, master's level psychologists 
who work only with children and women and their parents or family members and the essence is to strengthen the family to identify challenges and errors problems of strengths and problems of weaknesses and give good direction they do marriage family they do premarital counseling and they help to build that foundation in that family for example any problem the family has they have to call this person for this person to talk to them and give them direction because some people are not do not have that strength some households are sick that they need someone to be talking to them in our villages we used to have our grandparents our pastors our priest our old elderly uncle and auntie who will come whom you can call when you have a problem with your husband whom you can call when you have a problem with your wife but now we have four false prophets four spiritual prophets who will come in and even take your wife who will come in and even snatch your husband in the name of marriage family counseling so be careful of who you call be careful of who you call call a licensed expert whom when you talk to if he violates it you can sue him for breach of confidentiality or you can sue him for my for my practice if he tries to take advantage of you for example there's the law of um, the law of um, a dual dual relationship this dual relationship is an ethical breach in the practice of our profession in all the field of uh, helping profession mental health and uh, humanitarian profession you don't have to uh, have two relationships you are going in for a relationship for healing and for therapy over psychological work over mental assistance over marriage family assistance you have to do just that you don't go in and you want to go out with a person you don't go in and you want to sleep with the person. You don't go in and you want to marry the daughter. You don't go in, even if the marriage is good intention, but you don't go in and you discuss that. In some states, you have to wait for two years until that individual is no longer your patient or your client before you can contract any other relationship. That leads to conflict of interest. Conflict of interest and dual relationship is what you have to study in the field to know what your limitations are in this practice. Most people are placed on suspension or their license are revoked because they don't know how to draw the boundaries. You have to draw that boundary. And so, other people who want to study psychology, and especially those are our kids, you now know what to study in school. You now know the different branches that I've informed you about. You don't know which branch, what branch led to, leads to what type of job and opening. You now know why the Western society is so advanced and moving forward, why we keep moving behind, because we don't have value. We don't value human beings' feelings, emotions. We don't, we don't know what their intelligence uh, capabilities are. We don't know uh, how others react in situations. We don't, we don't, we don't try to draw, we, we, don't, we don't draw boundaries. We mix everything. For example, um, there's a law there's a law that psychologists and most people of the mental health and helping professions of higher level, even it applies to some judges and lawyers of high standing, have a radius square, a radius mile square mile, mile radius square uh, habitation area with their client population, their, 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 their treating population. For example, you are not supposed to go to the same church with your clients. You are not supposed to shop even in the same market with your clients. You are not supposed to attend the same traditional meetings with your clients. Those you are seeing, because that can also extend to conflict of interest and dual relationship. I won't accept my ex-girlfriend for therapy. I won't. I won't do therapy for my own wife or for my own children. I won't. I will call a colleague. I will say I have a case that necessitates a, a referral because there is conflict of interest. I have a case here that necessitates a referral because there is a conflict of interest. You, you see, and we, we call those issues, we call those issues when they do project themselves during treatment as Transfer, transference and counter-transference issues. Transference and counter-transference. Transference and counter-transference, which means the issues of the treating expert and issues of the client that conflict will get along the way in the cost treatment. 
issues that do not pertain to the presenting issue, issues that had been, for example, if my father, who is of late, had a problem with Mr. So and So's, Mr. So and So, who is a neighbor, and the son lives in the United States, and the son is coming to see me to, to try to guide his family towards, towards successes in life or try to map out and resolve a family issue that he has, or try to counsel him on a good and appropriate direction to follow in life, I may look at that issue to be troubling to me that my father was wronged by this person's son or by this person. So if I were receiving this person, there's already a bias. Because that image of what happened a few years ago is in my brain. So I would like to send this person to see my colleague. Because there are transference and counter-transference issues that may come into play. That may influence my judgment to not be able to make a rational and objective treatment plan for this individual. Because every time I lay my eyes on him, so that old incident comes into play. And we are not allowed to reject. We don't reject. On the other hand, this is the tricky part of it. You cannot tell that person, no, I will not help you. You can never. If you reject somebody, you, your license will be revoked. You, you accept the person, you talk to him calmly, you listen to the problem, and you politely do a referral, explaining to him to be comfortable with that your friend, that he has more expertise than you in handling those areas. That is why I am sending you to him. I don't want to harm you. I want you to get the best of what you have come to look for. So... This is the way you handle such situations. So, in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, the essence of why I came here is to tell you that as you young guys back in Africa are preparing to come to abroad, you guys should not think that the expectations of life abroad limit you to what you are seeing. What you may be seeing in some of the cities whereby there are negative Attitudes attached to some Africans. For example, when you visit Maryland, you visit Chicago, you visit California, Los Angeles, you visit Brussels, you see Cameroonians hustling, trying to do black jobs, black collar jobs to put food on the table, which is a starting point. It is not an end point. Do not limit your potentials. As you are writing that A level, that O level back home, try to know that there are some fields of study that you can get into on a gradual basis when you arrive abroad, or if you are already abroad, don't throw those your degrees that you had in history, literature, economics, geography, uh, political science, journalism, um, uh, food and nutrition, and all those. Don't throw those degrees and say that those degrees mean nothing. Here, here, na dollars. Those mean, it mean nothing. Here we must go, I will shit. Here we must go. That is the negative doctrine that has take, overtaken our society to the level that you go into offices now, you hardly meet a Cameroonian working in the social services. You hardly meet a Cameroonian working as a private therapist. You, psychologists, you don't have Cameroonian psychologists, clinical psychologists. You can have educational, clinical. You don't have even two or three of them in the United States. I looked for them, clinical. To be a supervisor for me, I did not see any. I struggled on my own. And right now, most of them come looking for me. Because there are some of them, even nurse practitioners, some of them that I offer clinical training with Walden University, because I also teach there in Walden University as a, as a psychotherapist. I also give them, I train masters to degree students as a clinical instructor for Walden University. I also, they, they take their residencies in my in my private practice, master's degrees nurse practitioners and master's degree social workers. I'm their, I'm their academic instructor and mentor. So what happened is that I tell them that I don't know why Cameroonians don't take or Africans don't take opportunities into their hands when they present themselves. There are few in this country like psychologists that you don't have Cameroonians. You don't have them. Everybody is one mainstream, nursing, nursing. That's where the body is, nursing. All is, not, all is not about money. The money is everywhere. It's a a doctorate-level psychologist make about 150 to 200K a year. 
150 to 200k. Is 150 to 200k small? It's not small. A nurse may be making 80. A master's degree nurse practitioner making 80, 90, 120. Some of them will walk back to back and all that. But if you have been that white collar or blue collar job seeker, if you had built up your psyche in Cameroon that you will be doing clean jobs, even after doing the dirty jobs to bring food on the table, please, that primary school, secondary school, high school, and, and university where you go for Cameroon, that certificate will hold up. It be very powerful. You don't see black American man with a whole high school diploma. High school diploma, it is the whole the whole village they celebrate party that day for high school diploma. Now they make her they start getting high school diploma for jails. You go prison before you graduate from prison, you don't get high school diploma. And when you don't get your high school diploma, no man of you see back again. That time you don't start wearing a coat and tie. Start to learn for community college for become a director. And when you get bachelor's degree, the place where they go put you, it will be na your boss. So we always get for work three times higher. For before any system, before we hold pen and paper, be allowed to diagnose a human being in America, a white person, to do this, do this, represent for court, talk be judge here. We will come a different country with different accent. It means we'll give a work triple hard. And why do I tell when I say you don't already do the bulk of the work in Africa? You get already a bachelor's degree. You can't reach here. You don't go study. You don't even find community college. Go talk, say, one do counseling for bachelors again for repeat them. For sure, they will give you a short course to just become a marriage family therapist in under 18 months after. To become a psychologist in four or five years after. Or even you end at the master's level, you at least be a marriage family therapist or a counselor. If you work with social services, if you work with immigration, if you work with social security disability for office, if you work in all this government places they need somebody for do assessment and evaluation counseling they also do assessment and evaluation we apply for social security and disability now an evaluator they tell you we apply it's a pity how lack of knowledge can delay one here you are giving free orientation on steps to brighter future that is what originally that's my calling psychoanalyst gambe man psychoanalysis remember in the days of British history, I read some novels them where they say even people the way they plant crops, agriculturalists the way they plant cassava, plant maize, they be get some person where you know be being an only weather forecaster. They be call yourself forecaster. So they be refer to it as witch. It will tell you how the harvest for this season go day, how the harvest for next season go day. So all farmers be go for go take advice on how harvest for next season will be even for america here yeah, we get somebody where they predict who will be the next president of united states they, they consult that person every year where election take place for america they go consult that person for who will be the next president for america and all we don't ever talk up see the person will be the next person president for america it don't always be this is the job i'm doing for you people freelance for free, no money. Why be sad? Being Gambe man of the revolution, they say, "Oh, Gambe man, need to need Gambe man." I say, "Sako, they take when I go nowhere. That money, all the investor for Bitcoin, containers they were for Nigeria, they bring and bag. You can't chop all money in a triangle. I don't dare me for triangle. Oh. I don't see. I don't tell una. In three hundred years, there will be no independence. They say, "Oh, Doctor Nick, don't chop soya." Okay. Three years after, backward train. All man don't fall back. Gold watch don't quiet now. They, they, they cry over spill milk. Lamenting every day. Lament. Why? Because you don't have the third eye and the sixth sense. You cannot see these things. When you are trained in this field, you are trained, first of all, to use this third eye and sixth sense for your personal growth and development. That's why before there's any danger, I don't carry my bag go. When I sit somewhere with four or five friends, before, when I find that environment become unconducive and insecure, when I see criminality on the path, when I see that there may be a mayhem somewhere, I don't go. And as I reach us, the call me tell me, say, what happened there? You saw it before you left. It's about three times in Cameroon that I visited Cameroon, or even in Germany when I was in Germany, before I even attempted doing this field. We were, we were, not, we were not having papers. We went to parties. <laughs> that time I smoke cigar well. 
I go buy a cigar. I go go pick a, a packet of Marlboro for road. I want to see. As I did for that store, I go buy Marlboro. They tell me they don't carry all man for party go with them. German police, I just sweep all man. Take who hands they go bear with that story. German police, I sweep all man. Who I go go buy a cigar? <laughs> it's a dick. Play with this job, you can go to your house. They don't go with Oban. Police they don't take Oban for going to examine documents. Party close. <laughs> Nigeria did that. The year 2000, 1999, 2000. So, I want to tell you that sometimes we get some. God, the show we say this on feel now we feel. God, the show we and when it comes to diagnosis and other things, that very that's something we need. Now a gift because if you miss diagnosis a lot, especially when you are dealing with the clinical setting, you can be treating um, bipolar in place of schizophrenia. You should be careful. You can be treating bipolar in place of schizophrenia. You can be treating uh, anxiety in place of depression. You we call that misdiagnosis. So you have to be very, very efficient in carrying out diagnosis in order not to miss one relevant issue. Um, uh, how do we do diagnosis? Uh, we we do a mental stats. You have first of all do a mental status evaluation, uh, which is part of the comprehensive psychological evaluation. Um, you look at that individual's history from birth to present, examining a educational history, uh, relationship history, uh, childbirth history, uh, problems with the law, legal history, uh, um, upbringing, um, a medical history of physical ailments, uh, medica past medications, all those things, what the person say about himself, what family members say about him, what his friends and schools and teachers and doctors and lawyers and the society talks about him, um, uh, his hygiene and other things, um, observation, physical observations and other things that you document. Then from there, you look at what you find among those things that the abnormalities. And those abnormalities now becomes uh, what you identify within the criteria of a particular specific disorder in, in the American, um, in the DSM, the American Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the Psychiatry. DSM, the American Diagnostic and Statistics Manual. You have the DSM-4 and the DSM-5. You have the cross, all the diagnoses have been listed there. What if a person behaves like this, what he falls under, um, what to give him. At some times, a person may have comorbid, comorbid, which means a criterion features in this axis and in this other axis. So you have to rule in also if you have comorbid disorders like and then you also have a cross-cultural diagnosis uh, across the various areas. The same pattern of behavior uh, exists. So you have to differentiate and know what you will qualify as that person's primary uh, disorder, what is secondary disorder, and what is this. You can be having anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress, major depression, all those, but I will know how to compress it. For example, if someone suffering from depression and at the same time suffering from post-traumatic stress, I can just say suffering from post-traumatic stress depression. Cut it one, cut it short so that every component is in one. And then there's anxiety for the B. Then you look at medical conditions. Are there any medical conditions and medications the person is under? Because some of the medical conditions does exacerbate the mental status or the mental health. What are the other triggers that come along. Is it suffering from a divorce issue, child having a terminal illness that the wife or him himself has or a child in the house? You do a comprehensive family evaluation and a comprehensive individual evaluation to understand best from what angle that person is suffering. And so, uh, when you come to all this before you can conclude into settling down to do treatment. Treatment is two-phase. Therapy, psychotherapeutic treatment, and medication management yeah so that's all i have to tell you people for today there's also adaptive behavior analyst yeah this is another good site this is under educational psychology some people study to become adaptive behavior analyst adaptive behavior analyst 
They use standardized assessment tool that utilizes series of structured interview to measure adaptive behavior and provide support and diagnosis and in, for intellectual dis disabled children. Like the children who are in school suffering from autism, uh, developmental brain developmental delays and others are being attended to by adaptive behavior analysts. And these adaptive behavior analysts make about $250,000 a year. That's a branch of educational psychology that has to do with adaptive behavior. I have my brother or my friend, from childhood growth friend, that is one of AD, AD, ABA in California, uh, Dr. Lawrence Awemu. Uh, kudos to you, man. I dove my heart to you. He's an ABA, adaptive behavior analyst, and has been a, an instructor in public school for about 15 years to 20 years in California. So when I was doing my doctorate, he was also doing the ABA, adapt, adaptive behavior analyst. These are people of high standing, and these are people who make the big bucks. So when you come to America, or you go to UK, or you go to anywhere, and you find Cameroonians who have clustered themselves and say, we die here for nursing. We die here for, 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 for Uber driving. We die here for this with degrees in their pocket. Give them my video to watch. There are more potentials in them than what they think about themselves. There's more way for a Cameroonian now to, to come to America and become a master's degree holder in one of these fields in psychology, to become a, a counselor, a private practice counselor, a private practice clinical psychologist, a private practice marriage family therapist, a private practice social worker, a private practice drug addiction therapist. That's, that one is even the simplest. In under three weeks to one month, you can do drug treatment and have certifications. And start working in methadone centers where they administer methadone for all those drug addicts. That gives you a foundation going somewhere. It's not only to come and sit and say, oh, we will follow one mainstream. Then very soon you find people who were with you in that mainstream have left you. For example, people call me in Maryland, Dr. Nick, why did you leave Maryland? Why did you leave Baltimore? Why did you? I say, I have green, I'm looking for greener pastures. I'm in West Virginia. I work in an office with 300 white people. I'm one, one of the few blacks, two or three blacks there. And when I get into the office, I work with them. And I come back, I do my private practice. I stay in, my, in an area where I can stay for six months without seeing an African. I say, wow, this is what I want to share with my fellow Africans that you have to sometimes step out of that zone, discover new things, project others, hold their hands, and integrate them more into the community. So that you don't seem to be talking only about achusum dole, bitalif, and all those kind of things, nursing, and this. Come and let us go on air and start talking real knowledge, real stuff, real stuff. Start telling your brothers and sisters, holding their hands, holding those children who are studying today history, literature, subjects, that they think that those subjects will not bring food on the table. Tell them that they, there, is, there, is, there is something in the horizon. You can study those subjects. You can study mass communication. You, you don't necessarily be... To end, to, uh, end, end be uh, journalism shouldn't necessarily be your end goal. I've seen people like Bea. Bea is a journalist. He comes here in the United States and sees people privately, sees couples privately because of his power of counseling and his extensive reading. When Bea came here last time, I gave him a call in his hotel room. I congratulated him for what he is doing because he is doing counseling and he is doing relationship counseling and he is doing therapy. He has had some training, but I tried to give him a pet, I gave him a pet on the back and I gave him more books to read to, info, to, 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 to strengthen his area of treatment because he, you can be counseling but to get into treatment is another issue. Treatment is not only the talking part. Treatment is to be able to identify other deficiencies that are not cured only by talking and then you can be able to handle them. For example, there are some techniques you would do with patients who are suffering from acute trauma. If you are suffering from acute trauma, depression medications will not help. They can only limit it, but it will not eradicate. You need to see someone who is well trained in handling EMD, EMDT. They call it uh, EMDR, eye movement desensitization and rapid process reprocessing. 
eye movement resensitization and rapid reprocessing. EMDR, EMDR therapists are specially trained to handle trauma. And these are people who will know what to do that I cannot share here. And um, that is treatment. When you go into treatment at that level, and you go into treatment into medication management, then. So I, I try to tell some of these talk show counselors, motivational speakers, that I identify them doing counseling in a way. I try to support most of them. That's why you see me in, in their platforms. I support Theresia Agbo in Germany. She does a very good job as a social worker. Her topics are very nice. She uplifts a lot of people. If you listen to her, she empowers a lot of our society. I support um, Lady London, although she will say, Congo Saddam boss, that's her way of attracting the population. But when you go to listen, you see what she's talking about. She's gathering us together to give ideas on how we can resolve some presenting issues. That's where some of us take our therapy when we cannot see a therapist. We go online. I, I appreciate a Laugh and Learn uh, talk show. I appreciate uh, Christy in London. I am under their profile sometimes to comment and to weigh in on phone calls to support them. But I always encourage them to take that as a career and try to give it an intellectual twist like take some courses in this, study some ethics and get some license wherever you are so that you cannot be incriminated. You can say something and you fall into into the law without knowing. I hear some of them are being fined now in court, fighting. Some people have charged $25,000 in court because you don't know how the boundaries. You've crossed the boundary of counseling. Just like Will Smith crossed the boundary of 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 of, <laughs> of human behavior at the Oscars. So um, these are things we learn every day. Um, I'm here always. I'm at your disposal all the times. If you have any issue you want to contact me about uh, privately you can you can send me a whatsapp my phone number is uh, plus one four four two three four seven seven zero four five plus one four four two three four seven seven zero four five and my professional email is a as in alpha p as in peter p as in peter S as in Samuel, USA, info, info at gmail.com. A P P S, USA, info, I N F O, info at gmail.com, which A P P S stands for Association of Psychological and Psychiatric Services. A P P S, Association of Psychological and Psychiatric Services. Uh, USA, info at gmail.com. That's my professional email. And my phone number again is plus one. Someone should write it down as I'm reading. Plus one, four four two, three four seven, seven zero four five. Yeah, yeah. Plus one, four four two, three four seven, seven zero four five. Yeah. If you are interested to further your career in psychology, you should contact me. If you are a child in school that does not know what to choose as a career, contact me. If you have immigration issues and you are they're asking you for hardship, someone is calling me, I can see, but it's on mute. Yes. If you have immigration issues and uh, you, you think that they need a hardship document, or if you are having um, uh, immigration issues whereby your documents are stored and they need a hardship proof, um, your, your your lawyer, your attorney has requested for one for you to see a psychologist. You contact me. If you need guidance and other things in family and other things, contact me. If you need uh, to carry out disability tests for your children, academic assessments, evaluations, for example, intellectual uh, evaluations, IQ assessments, uh, to carry out other things or you are having a criminal issue or someone is in detention that needs psychological help, you contact me. If I cannot help you, I will always direct you where to go. I will give you a heads up because these are areas where our society is suffering. Our society is suffering because, one, we don't have uh, Cameroonian and African psychologists, even in America. We don't have them. We don't have them. I cannot have, I cannot, I, they can tell you, find those who have done nurse practitioners and risen up to be DNPs, doctor of nurse practice. 
with specialization in psychiatry that is not a clinical psychologist that is somebody who can do therapy that is somebody that can do medication prescription and management the same like a psychiatrist but when it comes to doing assessments assessments the power of the psychologist is assessments doing iq iq assessments which are which are valid which are valid and regarded by government as valid it either comes from an md or a clinical psychologist even if you take that immigration form they will tell you that you should bring a document written by a medical doctor a psychologist two persons two persons no space for any other one two persons once you bring that document you are exempted from a lot of things but, but be careful the document must be truthful make a and nothing said the kid here is truthful because they have their own government psychologists who will look at what you wrote and they will measure what you wrote if it's a lie license don't come off my hand so be careful before you come up know that you have a genuine concern very genuine so we can look into then i will assess it and see if you fall within the category to benefit from every anything so let me start educating our society about psychology we will leave politics more we'll talk about professionalism now man remove some people them way they don't they suffer for inside play where they don't belong and they don't keep degrees them inside their pocket for america or for germany or for belgium and they rotten for their pocket because they can meet up one mr this and this will be frustrated they carry them go show them they clean that shit we're going to stop this nonsense when people come when they get potentials when i don't feel help them direct them for people they want to go show them clean road they say follow man way no road now for that we'll end my talk today follow man way no road i will leave una but i will come back anytime again we'll get any important thing that i can't broke up una very well i'll talk and talk about pigeon too Someone I hear well. My, my, my most important thing that will save a lot of people the way they don't be stuck for do it where they don't like. If you get money, but you do it where you don't like. You do it where you don't feel for. That way you'll be unhappy. Try to do something where you work in a clean environment, you'll be proud of yourself. Now, why the way, tell me, I'm going to do my doctorate. They say, Doctor, need no go do doctor. With your master's degree, you make a lot of money. You can be making people go out and do doctorate and come back. The increase in salary is just about uh, five, another $5,000. And this and that, I say, I want that title. I want that title. I need that name. Now, why the way, I wear my robe. I'll be very proud of my robe. And why the way, even if I don't make money, I'll be happy with which I don't achieve. I'll be happy, sir. At least, if she don't talk sense, do carry out. White man is theory and philosophy because for that classroom, they measure up now white people, they measure up now black people. These are concepts that they grew with. These are concepts that they grew with, which was even very strange for me. Strange. Sometimes you don't know how you measure somebody's feelings, how you measure somebody's emotions, how you measure somebody's intelligence. I mean, don't say they measure Nagari and they measure Kokoyams. You find yourself to be measuring things that, you know. They have already established the standardized scales to use to measure. And for them, if you not talk their language, they have a language that they expect you to speak in these fields. If you are not speaking the language of that field, <laughs> uh, they will say, go read more. You never hear they talk that language. You have not had the third eye. You have not had the sixth sense. Maybe this field is not for you. So open your mind. Come inside. It's something we can teach some of you to know. Don't be stuck in the world where you want only for go, move some person in the diaper, clean your house, cook chop, take ten dollar at the end of one hour. No. Come and do something that you can see one patient for one hundred and twenty dollars an hour. You can see one client for one hundred and fifty dollars an hour. That's what counselors make one twenty an hour, psychologists make one fifty an hour. You work eight hours a day on one fifty an hour. Are you not proud of yourself? They will work not they self. You begin to drink your mimbo. Play your music for your house. Wear your coat them. Play your music. You don't need for this or man can stress you. Because when you are going in to do those eight hours, you know today I'm coming home with big money. You know? Or somebody call you for doing one evaluation or assessment. It's about three thousand five hundred to do to do an assessment. Three thousand five hundred dollars to do an assessment. Some assessments one five. 
That's an assessment that can take seven hours. So, when you have one or two in a month, you are dead on fine. So, I want to tell when I say, when I change with the, the, the cup, when I wear them, the thinking cup, oh, society, the wear them, give us that change. Start beginning know now, say, tomorrow, it will be a Cameroonian at the Supreme Court. When I don't watch how a black woman don't she don't for Supreme Court for her eye. That girl, that girl with the small picking from my back with the border 1980 something. Now hear that for her eye. When I start training with her own children, they may they enter into some of these fields. Law, psychology, political science, all those kind of things. Get inside. Well, it's the healthcare, enter healthcare in the administrative area. So we can take control. We can take control. It's easy to take control. Very easy. Follow their footsteps. They already know road. Move, follow their footsteps. Know where to hold the study. Know what to study so that when a name no go loss. So that tomorrow, you can, now we have a Cameroonian running for governor in Pennsylvania. Dr. Chezama is running for governor for Pennsylvania. That man get about three doctoral or four doctoral degrees. As I say, get a doctorate degree, um, now a surgeon, he get a doctorate degree again for, 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 for public health, get a doctorate degree for healthcare management, get another one. Let me say the man is too much. Then you get other people, them here away. They don't want to catch man where he goes school. They don't want to catch man where he choose different field. They don't want to catch man where you must do not their thing with them. All you and them must they suffer. Oh, you know if you carry degree of a Cameroon, you can hide the underbox, go join the sofa. The no man know even if I can't counsel you. If I tell you how long it takes, why I suffer before I discover the fear where they do. I'm. I just go around on my own. Tell me open computer for America for find job. All place now counsel on it, counsel on it, counsel on it, truck driver needed, counsel on it, counsel on it, marriage family therapy is needed, counsel on I say, hey, this thing had the whole computer now, counsel, counsel, counsel. There are shortages. People need people to talk to them. Medical hospitals need patients that need to be talked to. Prison yards need people to be talked to. Schools and colleges need people to be talked to. They... Everywhere is full of sick people. In the absence of people to be talking to, guns. Now guns, they come out. Now bombs, they explode. When I know I can go land something where when I think I'm holding bomb, they will not explode. And maybe the gun, they don't come out. Na 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 certain punish one all man can learn to go clean shit. I beg when I open our eyes, go different size too. Come move to we enter the office them. Show them to say we get potentials. The same head where they get, not the same one we will carry. We also pass their own. Because when I be start for do this thing, I don't be even know say I go make them. But I want to see my GPA for masters 3.92, my GPA for doctorate 3.81. I say, ah. I'm not speaking the language. I am speaking the language. It's nothing. Even if it's in hard for Duam, go for YouTube. Go learn how other people did Duam. You go Duam the next morning. I don't teach with a small secret today. No, bye bye. I love you guys all. Enjoy your Sunday. I don't come away anybody intend for coach any people their job. But I come for talk say we have to grow. Sometimes before people want to grow, you must coach them. When I have a nice day, in a Dr. Nick Santos. When I still remember the name Gambe man, a psychoanalyst. I've given you people my all. This is my blessing to you people. This is my gift that I can give. They say teach people how to fish. Don't give them fish all the time. Teach them how to fish. When I can't join me, move fish. Una bye bye.